Hey guys and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to compare a clip that was captured in ProRes RAW with a clip that was captured in ProRes and NLock. And we're going to look especially into highlight recovery, um, details in shadows and noise. Um, under my last video some people also um, asked if I could do a workflow video where I show how to handle ProRes RAW and ProRes files with NLock in Final Cut Pro 10. So this will also happen in this video, so stay tuned. In the last days I saw a lot of videos online that deal with workflow and ProRes RAW. And what they are doing is they take ProRes RAW footage, import it into Final Cut Pro 10 in a white gamut library and do a Rec 709 project. And then they import the footage and see in the waveform that everything is blown out. And they then decrease the highlights, pull down the highlights um, and magically the image looks perfect again. And they say this is the advantage of ProRes RAW that you can capture overexposed areas and then pull back um, and um, yeah, get all the highlights. This is not true. So what Final Cut is doing with this ProRes RAW footage is it interprets the ProRes RAW footage with, which was um, captured in another color space into the Rec 709 color space. And this is the reason why all the highlights seem to blow out. What you really need to do in terms of um, compar comparing um, ProRes RAW and ProRes is to capture ProRes RAW and ProRes with exactly the same exposure settings and then see if you are able to get more dynamic range, so um, details in shadows and also details in highlights. And I will show you how I am doing this. And by this you can then find that ProRes RAW has more dynamic range than NLock, but not a lot. Um, I would say it's about a half or a one stop difference in um, dynamic range. But another advantage of ProRes RAW is that I feel it is less noisy uh, when compared to ProRes, especially when you start to, uh, when, you, when you try to get um, a similar result of ProRes RAW files and ProRes files. And we will also see this in Final Cut Pro. 10. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and I show you what I mean. Okay, so we are in Final Cut Pro 10. First, we need to check that our library is indeed white gamut, which is the case. It's in German Breiter Gamut. It's white gamut. And then we can um, make a project and this project can be Rec 709 because we want to deliver in Rec 709 and not for um, HDR. And here are the two clips I was talking about. We can now import them. And then we get a warning that we are um, uh, yeah, importing an HDR clip into an SDR project, which is okay. And now we can close the library. And this is what I meant in the beginning. So when you see this clip, you would say, oh, there are a lot of clipped highlights and this uh, window here looks like a complete mess. And then I can go in, pull back, um, oh, this is saturation, pull back the highlights and magically everything appears here um, outside of the window. And I end up with, um, with quite a good shot. Um, actually, this is just how it was important, uh, imported. The um, um, exposure looked more or less like in this shot, but this was um, is, is, is not a raw clip, this is the log clip. So I'm quite happy with, um, with the raw clip here. And in order to work with um, the N-Log clip here, um, I'm applying a correction LUT and this is the LUT um, that was provided by Nikon. So I add the LUT effect and choose 3D LUT um, C6 to um, C6 and lock full to Rec 709. And of course this looks 
also horrible because uh, input is not rec 7 uh, rec 2020 but rec 2020 pq and we are delivering in rec 709 so this looks much better now now we can uh, that we now transformed the log footage to rec 709 we can apply um, additional corrections and play around with um, shadows highlights and midtones and what we are trying to do is to achieve a similar look um, than we got with this um, with this raw footage what you also it's also interesting to see is that um, Nlock is more cropped in than the raw footage. And also you can see this was filmed with 24 millimeters that there is barrel distortion going on. This is not a straight line here and this is already corrected in the lock clip because um, only a portion of the sensor is taken and I assume that um, distortion is already corrected um, with the lens profile. This is not done in the in the raw clip so you can now play around with the clips until you get a um, a similar looking image and i already did this in let me see in this project so the first clip here you see is um, the raw clip and you can see it looks quite nice we have details in the room but we have also a lot of details outside and this is the analog clip and you can see that it looks almost identical but um, especially in the outside areas um, the raw clip has more contrast which we might uh, need to add to this clip okay so in this scenario both analog and raw would be fine but when you when we go into um, 200 percent view we can see that in the analog clip there's already a lot of noise and you can see this here especially in the shadow areas where we lift the shadows a bit also in this area there's a lot of noise going on so we might need to denoise this clip also here when you look at the window a lot of noise and when we go to the raw clip which is this you can see that there is much less visible noise when you compare it to this one And also this clip could need um, some contrast. Also when we look down here and we jump back and forth you can see that the analog clip definitely has more noise and this is in part because we um, didn't apply correct exposure to this shadow areas because we wanted to achieve maximum dynamic range so in this case um, what I could have done better is to expose um, a little bit more but I wanted to, to use the same settings so with the same settings um, there is really an advantage of using ProRes RAW because it's in the end less noisy and it's um, at least for me easier to come to a final result and to achieve this kind of image okay that was the video comparing ProRes RAW and ProRes and um, showing you my Final Cut Pro 10 workflow if you have any questions um, regarding this topic just leave me a comment I will answer to every and um, all comments you write and uh, I hope to see you in one of my next videos and till then bye so